I believe that science is a process by which we gain a body of knowledge. And the body of knowledge that is, to me, the most important that children obtain about science is what makes their world around them work. Why things are the way they are. Okay, class, now we've been looking at rocks, and we've noticed that rocks are made up, bigger rocks are made up of smaller rocks. And now we're going to be looking at some soil. First thing we're going to do is look at this dirt with our hand lenses. So I'm going to scoop a little vial of dirt. Everybody's going to get three different small pieces. We just make first with the hand lens and then even closer observations with the microscope to see what's in the soil. Then as we're looking at different soils, we can make comparisons between the soils. It looks like a carrot. You think it looks a little like a carrot, which would be what? Organic. Organic, very good. What's that blue thing? I don't know what that blue thing is. It's like a crystal. It does look like a crystal. What do you think that would be, organic or inorganic? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, do you think it looks like it was once alive, or do you no, think not? I think it looks like it's soaked and dead. Okay, then that would be mm -hmm. inorganic. Once you get them into the habit of making observations, you want to hone their observations to become more detailed, and their expression of their observations to include more detail. I can have them come up to the screen and point to me exactly what they're seeing, so I know what they're observing, because they've just demonstrated it to me. and that allows me to give them better instruction in how to become better observers. We're starting to let the children have a situation where they can start to make predictions about what's going to happen next. They feel in control. They have great pride over this. Today what we're going to do is study some of the structures of the crayfish. Let's start down at the tail. As you can see, the tail is not very smooth down there, is it? Can you see up on the screen? Now remember, you're going to be drawing this for me later, so I want you to take some really good observations. That's from the bottom of the tail. From the top of the tail, it looks like this. And later on, you'll have a chance to feel that these little spikes are really very smooth. They're very feathery like hairs. Things that I like to watch best on the fiddler crab. What do you think that is, guys? Lucy? His eye. Does he have a longer stalk, eye stalk, or a shorter eye stalk than the crayfish? Trevor? A longer. A longer one. And what's the advantage of that? Can you see the little hairs protruding from that eye stalk? Why do you think he would have hairs protruding from his eye stalk like that? Kate? To feel things. To feel things. He wants to, he wants to be able to feel because he's not going to be able to see right down his eye stalk, stalk, just like you have certain blind spots. And he wants to be able to feel if his eye is going to bump up into anything important that might hurt him. I've just upped the magnification so we can see the eye stalk in a higher power. Where are you? There you are. And you can see those lights of, from the microscope being reflected in his eye right back at us. And here we have another animal whose eyes are also on stalks. These stalks are very flexible. Can you see that little black dot at the end of the stalk? That's his eye. The microscope is invaluable in showing them the details of the different stages because it's very hard for the students to see the one little claw at the end of the leg with just a hand lens. And it's very easy to see with the microscope at a 50x. But let's take a look at his cute little mealworm face. Using the microscope as the teacher in the front of the classroom so that the whole class is looking at the same thing is a very useful technique for creating prerequisite knowledge for the students before they go off on to their own investigations. There you go. What is at the end of that darling little mealworm face? What's at the end of each of his legs? Can you see little tiny claws? One of the things, you guys have been counting the segments on this mealworm. 
So let's take a picture and figure out once and for all how many segments this mealworm has. First, let's check out those pinchers at a higher magnification, see what they look like. Okay, Josh, can you see what you oh, look? Look at how hairy he is back there. See the pinchers? Today, class, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at flower structure and all the different intricate parts of a flower. We're going to use the proscope and we're going to use our desktop uh, computers to basically aid us in this process. It will give us a much better image. Also, you'll be able to capture the image. So when you see a good image that you like, what we can do is capture that image just by pressing our button here. And basically, that will capture our picture. We can then print out our pictures, label all the parts later on so that you can have evidence of what you've been working on. First thing we're going to do is we're going to grab uh, one of our flowers and we're going to zoom in on it. And when we zoom in on it, what we're going to do is basically capture a picture. That's the picture I just captured. And what we're looking at here are the petals all the way around. And then in the center, our structures in here are basically, we can see one of the anthers, uh, stamen and the filaments, the anther and the filament. And uh, down in here, we can see the top part of the pistil. And so when we open this flower up, we'll be able to examine these particular parts a little bit better. Science is discovery. This lesson can be suitable just about any grade level. It depends upon the students you have in your class. You can definitely use it at elementary school level and do it just a simple lab. You can beef it up a bit as you go up through the elementary grades. Middle school works perfectly in any of the life science curriculum. And then in high school, you have life science. You also have uh, some programs in biology, AP biology, different levels of biology, and also in environmental studies, you can use it. By moving your little sample around, you will be able to find some of the larger organisms and take pictures of them. Here, I've captured two nice specimens. These are what are called Daphnia, or more commonly called water fleas. As you can see, they have an intricate eye spot. They also have appendages for moving. And when we get to study them in good detail, you'll be amazed at how quick they are and also how beautiful they are in their movement. If we can get a picture of their undersurface, since their carapace is fairly clear, we'll be able to see their internal organs also. We also have two other samples. We have a samples of mixed protozoa, in which you should probably see some rotifers and probably some algae samples also. And then we also have a pure sample of rotifers and you'll be able to see them. <laughs> Looking at critters is fun, whether it be freshwater critters or marine critters, looking at critters is fun. First of all, kids never know really what they look like. And they're just astounded to see the different shapes and sizes that they come in. In the samples that we looked at, they were teeming with life. What I want the students to be able to do is, number one, identify them. Number two, see if we can classify what particular group of organisms they belong in. And lastly, maybe we can see some internal parts. The handheld microscope is immediate response.